All right guys, so I'm out here, I'm about to run the ADX-10, but first I'd like to go over just a few things I found when I ran through it last night. So after the unbox video, I took out the brush system, stuck the motor in a cup of water and ran it for a little bit, you know, did a break in. And while I was doing that, I looked through all these parts. Now, of course, I checked all the screws like I said I was going to, and like they all actually seem you know, to be in just right, you know, none are stripped, none are super loose. Like, this thing truly was put together pretty well at the factory, except these screws right here, you can see that, like, they're countersunk, but they're not in quite deep enough, so, like, that's probably going to cause some issues on a bad jump, or... You know, if something happens to scrape along the underside, over time that's just going to wear down those heads. But I have a countersink tool, so I'll just fix that. <clears throat> now, another thing with this battery tray, it is quite big and, you know, open. There's only one drawback, though, is... Yeah, let's see if I can open it up. This pin holds the whole lid in. Yeah. It is pretty cramped in there, mainly because like it's got a big uh I'm guessing that's um either a Molex or a Tamiya plug. But if you have uh pretty thick wires or a big battery plug, that will cause some issues. Now, if you have a pack with the wires coming right out the end like this one then what you'd probably want to do is just instead of putting the connector in here run the battery's connector out through the top where the ESC's connector comes in and just connect it up there that'd be a whole lot easier you know I should probably do that right now but I already got it in there so I'll just leave it and there on and one more thing I'd like to run through though also that the switch is right there for the ESC now the issue with that is that switch is right up against the shell just right up against it so that could accidentally get hit but enough talking let's run it yellow light, when it binds with the receiver, it it all turns green. Let me, let me find that switch. See that status light? I don't know if you can see it in this light. Power light's on, yellow. Um, I don't know if that means it's low. Status light, green. Alright. Oh, calm down, buddy. Now of course it is not very fast, but of course, but that's expected with a brushless system. I mean, with a brush system. Sorry. Um, brush system, nickel metal pack. It's not going to be very fast, but we'll hook it up with something ample in power. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah.
Not much punch, of course, you know, brushed in nickel metal. And those factors and the fact that it had a, one of those, uh, I don't know, I don't know whether it's Tammy or Molex, but either way, if it had one of those plugs, so it's, I know it's not a high amp system. Reset the trim a little bit. For some reason I like, likes to pull to the left. I'm sorry, boo boo. Give it a quick check out really quick. I know that while I was doing the break in though, I might have been running the motor like pretty high, but like the ESC was getting a bit warm. So I good condition of that. See it's warm now. And not quite as warm as it was last night, but then again, I was running it for a long period of time last night. You had to hurry along the break-in process. See, I'm like, it's it's an ample brush system. It's not super powerful or anything, but I'll, and it's waterproof, so that's good. But I'll probably sell it and put in a new system. As for this uh, receiver box here, I opened it up last night, and it's not a super tight seal, but it does, I, it does have a foam pad in the the slots where the the you know servo and ESC wires go in, so that's good. Uh, then it has like a uh, rubber ring around the edges, so sort of like a Traxxas receiver box. But I'll still open it back up and run some marine grease along in there to make sure it's a good seal. But yeah, I'd say it, it's pretty good for the system it has. It, it's not a super powerful system, but it wasn't made to be. And you can. Like put something better in it and you know make it a super beast but they give you everything you need to get started even the wall charger all right so right after this i'll put in my final thoughts and you know any comments video that's where people can start asking questions about it you know, you know ask any in-depth questions by then i should have uh, opened up the kit, looked at the internals. No, 
Oh, I almost forgot one con. I almost forgot that. The, the servo. The, I, let's look at how the servo is mounted. It's not, just so you know, this part is not a cover where I just take off a couple of screws and pull it out. You know, this is all attached to the whole front, you know, assembly of the, you know, kit. So, in order to get the servo, I would have to pull these screws, pull these screws, the corresponding ones on the other side, and then just pull out that whole assembly, and then open it up and slide in a new servo. That's going to be a bit hectic. I'm pretty sure I will have to do that, because while the stock servo is okay, it, it's a bit slow, and, you know, I... I didn't see any issues with strength because this isn't a heavy kit and not hard to turn. It's just a bit, just a bit slow. But yeah, that's those are my thoughts for running it. Up next, your know, final thoughts and reviews the Squirrel OD style. Later, guys.